Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the additional comments made by some of the developers during the 14-hour live broadcast. Now, these comments in particular deal with different aspects of the upcoming patch 4.1, as well as discussing Omega Savage itself. I'm just going to simply provide you with the translations that are here on Reddit. Be sure to go to the initial source, provide Karma, Reddit Gold, whatever it is that's valuable over there. And once again, it's going to be 11 Mile. Uh, he's actually been popping up a lot here on the YouTube channel because he's been doing a lot of translations translations over on reddit so thank you 11 mile for your hard work it's much appreciated and i'm sure the community could definitely do with a few more thank yous for you i know you're getting one from me right now but anyway there's some very controversial comments here that i definitely wanted to get to especially these first ones these are the things that i've been getting asked about a lot since this was posted about 16 hours ago so, uh, these comments come from the B stream, uh, the sub broadcast. I believe that was the broadcast that Takai was on. He was doing the Wonder's Tale challenge during the 14 hour broadcast. So, let's see what we got here. If your party is one that would give up on A4 Savage, the fourth floor of Gordius, that is, uh, then you might as well give up on Ultimate Bahamut Phase 1. That is, I, I don't know that I, I believe it to that, to that degree. You have to remember, a lot of the times they're drinking and joking around here. So, I don't know how much I take that verbatim. But that's crazy, because the only thing that was really annoying about A4 Savage was really Nisi. The rest was just a super boring fight. So a lot of people just gave up out of boredom. So I hope we can't make that comparison realistically, but this is comparing it, man, to, to Ultimate Bahamut just Phase 1. That's that's intense. Uh, that's I, I feel like they're going to eat that those words. But I, again, don't take these super verbatim. It's not like this, these aren't things Naoki Yoshida said either. These are things the other developers had to say on that side stream. Uh, if you don't give up on phase one, even if they make you, you'll end up drifting into something further. So consider it a mercy. Uh, that pretty much just means, I guess more literally, that um, after phase one, it only gets worse. So if you didn't, if you don't give up there, you're you're only getting started. Keep that in mind. So they're they're really I don't know that I think they might be overhyping this fight in terms of difficulty because it's been regularly compared to Second Coil Savage. Granted, seeing the bosses in the unending coils of Bahamut, you can't presume it's anything even remotely comparable to Second Coil Savage because of the nature of the fight or the nature of what it's presenting itself to be. So. I don't know if I really believe all this overhype, but at the same time, I have nothing on the grounds to compare it to. If they do this again for 4.3, I'll definitely have grounds for it. And parties that are stuck on phase one should just go home. <laughs> just go home. That's all right. I am home. I'm literally playing in my home. That's, again, it's, I, I don't know, man. That's, it's just such a bold statement to make. And it's like, uh, they've, they've had these sort of hyperboles before. You know, and sometimes they're in, you know, a really negative direction. Sometimes they're in a really positive direction. But it's hyperbole all the same. I'm not going to take any of this literally. A lot of people keep asking me what I think of this. And I, I just think it's them drinking, having fun, and it being kind of taken out of that context and being placed in text format. So I, uh, I'm i going to just take that with a, with a grain of salt. Now on uh, Omega, just kind of looking back on specifically uh, the o o o o 04S. Um, devs don't understand what players mean by hard to see because of the boss's cape, referring to the black holes in the first phase. Just rotate the camera, and it'll solve the problem. For black holes, I do kind of agree. It's not really the same as Bahamut, where when Bahamut blocks your vision, it's kind of like, you don't know, you know, you're not keeping track of the summoner's rotation to know when Bahamut's gonna do it. It's kind of, you maybe get a feel for it after doing it enough, but... Black hole, yeah, you know, if you could kind of just have to know, maybe under the boss isn't safe. And yeah, if you rotate your camera, you can pretty well see the black holes under the keep. So I kind of understand that. It doesn't make it any less annoying because, especially when you're in the middle of rotation trying to get into the right position, that uh, it, it can be kind of tedious to to have to rotate the camera and rot and move the character and everything else you're trying to do at once. But uh, I, I guess I kind of feel it. Uh, devs expected players to deal with the black hole mechanic from the center of the arena. Um, so... Center of the arena is sort of how I prefer to do it. I, I always recommend moving uh, X death closer to the middle of the arena during 04 Savage. All the way to the middle, yeah, all the way to the middle works just as fine. Um, I don't particularly see an issue with it. 
and it guarantees 100% uptime, whereas even if he's just slightly off-center, then it's a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Dealing it from the center of the arena and then having them move outward, having the tanks and the healers move outward after that, uh, I feel like it gives the tanks and the healers probably a bit more room along the uh, four quadrants you would break the arena up to. So it's, uh, yeah, I can see why they would personally think that way. Now this next one, a lot of people were like, Ugh. Devs want you to challenge 04 Savage with an I-330 weapon, and more specifically, with, with that I-330 weapon, if you don't use infusions or potions, you should be able to clear it. This comment got a lot of flack because of the words Devs want you to challenge 04 Sav Savage with I-330 weapon. Keep in mind, Yoshi P has already straight up said that 04 Savage died in about the time he expected, so clearly it wasn't designed with that weapon item level in mind. They expected people to beat it before that. What they mean by want you to challenge it, these are this is more for like your average raider. You know, your average raider who's not using infusions or potions or not really playing to every advantage. If they're good enough to beat the fight in general, but they are not really taking advantage of everything, but and they're not to the same tier as other players, then yeah, an I-330 weapon seems a reasonable point in which you go, you know what? If we jump from I-320 I to I-330 weapons, yeah, this should be a big advantage and we should realistically be able to take this out now. So that's really more where that statement's leaning towards. It's not saying that it was designed for I-330. If that was the case, it wouldn't have an item level 320 minimum or expected or recommended item level in the party finder itself. So don't take that literally. You know, kind of take that within the context of the, what the developers and what Naoki Yoshida have said otherwise. Uh, other information in general, uh, devs will continue implementing a feature where you can, or consider implementing a feature where you can change weather and time in group poses. That's good for people with group poses, the more customization they can get. Uh, the funnier the content is, Denmo, I'm looking forward to see what you can do, my friend. Also, having just done a more machinima style video, I did have to kind of try to do it all really fast because I was like super unfamiliar with it and I didn't have means of manipulating the weather and the time of day. So I was like, okay, just get all get all these get all these things done in like, you know, a minute, minute and a half, and then I'll just edit it together in a certain way. Uh, official aggregation of players who get all three lines in Wonders Tales is lower than 0.5%. Now, if I'm not mistaken, 2.8% is the odds at which you have to get a three line um, based on yeah, yeah, I think I think by the by the time it's all said and done, I think it's like two point six or two point eight percent, and the fact that it's lower than 05 percent means I mean it means a few things statistically. It means that maybe not everyone a, a not everyone's doing it. I know I don't, um, and b the people who are doing it, you know, not everyone really cares to get the th to the three lines because they don't really think they're going to get it in the first place. So. Uh, yeah, definitely factors into that. Wind Up Chimera will be available in 4.1. No way to obtain it currently, so it's another minion to look forward to. And this minion will be implemented in the future. Oh, I forgot about that minion, the little, the little, uh, the little seal with the the mustache. Uh, okay, that's a that's a fun looking minion. I don't want to talk about minions because of the Yokai Watch thing. So let's uh, let's move on. Uh, this figure is set to be available in November. What is this? Oh my. Oh, oh you, Chloe. Oh you. Reminds me of Soken at the 14 hour broadcast. Um, the person who made Nidhogg Extreme is the person mentioned in last year's Kenji Sudo panel. Kenji Sudo, by the way, is responsible for some of the most grueling encounters in the game, including Titan Extreme and Thornton Extreme, just to name two. I think he also did Titan Hard Mode as well. Uh, and this guy who made this comment is saying that he would never use Kenji Sudo as an example of how to make battle content, meaning. He basically would not, he doesn't have the same ideas. Like when, when Kenji Sudo makes an encounter, he loves making these grueling, brutal, you know, war of attrition encounters. And this battle developer prefers to make things that are challenging, but they're not like this over the top, over punishing, crazy set of rules in the encounter itself in order to overcome it. So uh, it's just that he, it's just, he wants, he's more of the, doesn't need to be overbearing and it, it should be fun kind of guy. Now, the fact he made Nidhogg Extreme is kind of weird, because I find that to be a very unfun encounter, almost kind of anticlimactic in a sense, considering the relevance of Nidhogg in the main scenario quest. So, I don't know how I feel about that, but if he worked on A10, which I thought was moderately, it was actually very fun mechanically, even though it wasn't overbearingly challenging, uh, and the Battle of Nadam being a great main scenario, uh, a main scenario encounter, he does do fun things, so I do have an appreciation for what this guy does. Uh, just talks about there's some Gundam references that uh, Oda Oda-san, uh, one of the uh, Yoshi, uh, what I'm not Yoshi, uh, Koji gave him an official title. He moved up to main scenario writer, but he still works on world lore. So uh, definitely not surprised to see him making those those injections. Uh, Kazutoyo Mehiro, the main scenario writer and event director, uh, the one of the other ones, um, 
Their favorite Final Fantasy is 5. Uh, Yasumi Matsuno's favorite are 1, 3, and 5. Uh, I guess kind of with the way Ivelisse plays out, 5 being Yasu uh, Yasumi Matsuno's favorite is really not all that surprising. Hmm. Uh, unrelated, this is the reason why Final, the reason why Final Fantasy VII had so many mini games is because there were too many programmers at the time. Yeah, can we uh, can we get those guys back and teach them how this works? Because that would be that would be really good. Uh, they also listed an actual source here at the bottom. So thank you, Eleven Mile, for this post right here. Take everything you heard here with a grain of salt. Take everything from the B. Uh, it says it's from the B stream. So if you go back and watch it, you should theoretically be able to find these comments over the fourteen hours at some point. Uh, that being said, you know, I, I, some of these things without context or without, you know, kind of seeing them interacting with each other are kind of hard to really take at face value. But I wanted to report on these, especially because of the comments on Ultimate Bahamut or on uh, the unending coils of Bahamut, as I, as I should call it, uh, the ultimate difficulty. I felt like it was worth making a video real quick about these comments. So anyway, I'm going to get going. I got some other videos to work on. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned. We got... A lot of videos coming this week after PAX West. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, take care.